Uh, welcome everybody to the Board of Education uh, meeting, August 28th. I hope everybody's uh, summer is going well. In accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975 announcement, I wish to announce that the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the school districts of the Chatham Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, place thereof posted at the Board Administrative Offices, sent to the clerks of the Chatham Township, the Chatham Borough, the uh, Chatham Library, Library of the Chathams, the Chatham Courier, the Daily Record, the Star Ledger, and the, and the TAP, um, the Alternative Press Online Newspaper. With that being said, Mr. DeQuilla, if you're back with us, do you mind doing roll call? Not at all. Mr. Gilson, Mr. Arnett, here. Mr. Barry, Mr. Clark, here. Mr. Connors, 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 here. Mr.
um, Ann Warden, who's in the audience here tonight, and Shay Coleman, and Kathy Abbott was one of the parent volunteers who really helped push the effort forward. So it's a nice distinction. We're going to have a visit from the uh, Sustainable Jersey uh, program, uh, its, its main uh, representative or director, later on in September, and um, I'll be publicizing more of that as we kind of get closer to the event. But it's a good, it's a, it's a solid achievement, and Lafayette Avenue School deserves a lot of credit. They have a green team there that uh, led the entire uh, effort. Excellent. So congrats to Lafayette Avenue School. I love the distinction. Is there any hope of any, like, grants or funding? Yes. Or so you become eligible for, they, they have a series of grant um, offerings, if you will, throughout this, the year. And once you achieve, once you register, you can, you can become eligible for some low-level grants. Okay. Uh, but once you achieve certification, then you are eligible for um, bigger grants. And, and that's one of the carrots. Is there silver and gold as well? Yes. And I assume there's bigger grants that go with that? Correct. Okay. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. So they're working on it. Okay. Excellent. That's great news. Congratulations. Thank you. Just a quick question on the uh, 4192. Mm -hmm. um, that can't be right because our demographers reports for the last 10 years have said repeatedly that we're going to drop significantly enrollment. How's that going? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to point out that our demographers, although people insist that we pay thousands and thousands of dollars for demographer reports, the enrollment still comes up quite high, which is a nice accolade to the school district, but our enrollment keeps growing. Um, Mike, just one more last question. Did you say we picked up 50 students throughout the course of last About year? About 50 students. Okay. Netted 50 or like... Netted. Netted 50. Yes. So we had about, and I just remember because when I was writing my newsletter last year, the number that I had originally had in there was 4185. Uh, and that was about August 15th maybe when I wrote that. That was the number of students we had registered in Genesis. And by the end of the year, we were at 42, okay. 32 or something like that. Okay. Alrighty, so we'll just keep an eye on that, and uh, as long as they're spread out throughout the district, we should be okay. If they all are freshmen, we're in a bit of trouble. True. Or, or uh, fifth graders. Okay, thank you. I didn't have any additional questions. Um, does anybody have anything else for Dr. LaSusa? No, good to go. All right, Peter, you're up. Uh, Mr. DeQuilla, if you wouldn't mind. Just wanted to give the board uh, and the public a construction update. We'll go over a couple of easy ones first. Uh, the borough is milling and repaving Duchamp Place this week, which will solve and improve the access for all of the staff members because the pothole Britain road will be corrected. They will also, as part of that project, uh, be repainting the, the lines for the staff parking. Oh, nice. So that should, we were assured that that should all be done by Thursday afternoon, so when the staff returns on Friday, there will be no construction and all done. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you to the borough. What does the township come first? Um, <laughs> oh, Lafayette got uh, yeah. Lafayette was finally repaved. Yes, so that looks good. All right, good. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> come up, come up, and, and give it a ride. Uh, it's I'm very smooth. Call her as I see him. All right, for Cougar, uh, for the construction updates that uh, under the district's um, control, Cougar Phase One and Two contract has made steady progress. The obviously the bleachers and the press box have been uh, delivered and are completed. About 90% of the walking path has been outlined. The last piece is just around the, uh, the new concession stand that is being, still being worked on. Uh, the paving should be completed this week, so we should be open um, in time for the uh, fall season. We know that the grass field has been allowed for practice uh, so far, not the turf. Uh, so that should be done with the exception of the concession stand. You know, that'll be finished, uh, should be finished by the end of the week. The Middle school interior alterations, the contractor, as uh, Dr. LaSusa alluded to, is coming down to the wire, and he should be finishing the last classrooms this week. Unfortunately, due to a uh, design change, there's a delay in the cabinets for both art rooms, but they will be able to use the space. They just will not have uh, some of their cabinetry in sinks. Oh. So that's uh, only one problem. The cabinetry should be delivered uh, by the end of September. Will they be able to install those on a weekend? Either that or second shift, or we'll try to install them. I know there is a Jewish holiday at the end okay. of September. So it's not going to interrupt school? No. Okay. Just Either that or uh, Principal Johorski said she will work around and put the art classes in a separate space for one or two days if they need access to the room so that they can get it done. I would just be worried about the noise and the, con the 
usually the cabinets is not a very noisy thing, okay. and where the art rooms now are located in the school, they're not really near anything to make noise. The only one, one of them, yeah, because the next to that is a TV studio, so they're on a far wall. So they're it's right on the exterior wall by the survey. <coughs> the they're like on the corner of the building by uh, the access road to the Hoss. to the fields if you're going down the field. Uh, the front office at Southern Boulevard, the inspections are scheduled for Wednesday, and then uh, um, the principal and staff will be all ready to go. The principal and front office staff have already vacated their prior, their former residences, and those were already made into small group instruction rooms. So we're ready to roll with that. The signage has been installed trying to direct the traffic to the back of the building so nobody tries to use the former front door to access the school anymore. Okay. That door will remain locked. It will only be an exit uh, from the building. The roof work, unfortunately, this contractor has been a thorn in the district side. Um, the work this week should be completed at the middle school and Lafayette, and the front portion of the high school is done. Unfortunately, the section over the high school auditorium will need to be completed in September. The architect is working on trying to set up a schedule. Uh, in conjunction with the administration, so we have the least disruption to students as possible. And all of the materials that will be needed for the auditorium work will be moved probably into the special service, uh, the former special service location, so we don't take up any part. For the roof work, you mean? Yes. Those big white bundles? Yeah. That's what's there right now. Yeah. Yeah. They will be moved. And the middle school, would those be moved, or those are in the fire lane? The middle school, hope they should all be <coughs> finished and installed this week. Okay. The middle school, the, the scope is to finish the work at the middle school and finish the work at the Lafayette this week. Okay. Because the contractor has two crews working. Is it the same contractor doing both roofs? Same contractor doing all four roofs. All four roofs, okay. And unfortunately, the architect warned that this is a result of Lowest one bid. of the negatives of low bid that the contractor does decent work, but you have to Stay on. be on top of them constantly. And the architect has done a good job, you know, barraging him with emails, letters, and, you know, get, trying to get him to be most responsive as possible. Okay, so we're just going to keep an eye on that? Yes, constantly. Um, on the high school auditorium, we received the, the second set of bids last week. Unfortunately, they do not meet the, uh, within a budget of you know, the budgeted funds, so we're rejecting those bids. And the district then, under the guidance of the state purchasing laws, can negotiate price with any of the contractors that, that uh, bid on the job the second time. So we'll go back to a negotiation pro project, uh, negotiation process, which according to the architect, he's confident will be more in line with budget. Okay. And that will start, well, the letters will go out uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, and we'll start that process, let's call it the beginning of September. Okay. Are the letters uh, invitations for negotiations, or is it mostly in person? Uh, I believe we send a notice, hey, all the bids were rejected, we're now open to negotiations, and I have to okay, then it begins. finalize the process. I don't know if we all sit together, or we sit one at a one at a time. Yeah. Okay. Will you have to take the lowest at this stage since none of the bids initially made it? Now we're going to what appears to be a second phase. Are we still required to take the lowest reasonable bid? No. The only requirement we've had the we've had the project out for public bid twice, and both time the, and both results were over budget. Now that we've rejected, we can go out and negotiate. The only stipulation is the negotiated price has to be lower than the last the lowest last received bid. So for example, if the last bid was $5 million, our negotiated price has to be four million nine hundred ninety-nine thousand. And we won't be required to go with the lowest of those three if we feel for some reason that, say, the middle of the, we, we're not, our hands aren't going to be as tied at this round as they would be initially. I have to verify that point with the attorney. That I didn't get to that if contractor one is comes up at four million dollars, the other one at three nine, but I like contract the one better. I don't that part I don't know. I have to leave check that in the last yeah. We may still be required I, the legal the lowest negotiated price. I think that's the case. I'm not an expert in that area of the law, but I do think that your hands are always tied in that regard. I have to verify that. We'll report uh, Peter, one quick question. Um, <laughs> regarding the contractor where uh, that's been a thorn in the school district side. Are we allowed to use our experience and keep track of that experience with any contractor who's 
doesn't perform as we wish they would um, perform and, uh, and, uh, and consider that in future bids or no? Yes, we, yes, we can. If we have a substantiated negative experience, for example, if we went and did roof work next year, um, if there's enough evidence in written correspondence, we can disqualify that bidder uh, from the next set okay. or disqualify his bid um, if we're doing more roof work. Very good, thanks. Okay. And the other bit note to go back to the high school auditorium, the negotiation process will not hold up the plan because the plan, dealing with the last set of bids, was to start construction in January, January and go with construction from January to August. So the negotiation process will not have an effect on the timetable for the work for the project. Wait, we have time there. On the middle school in Milton uh, cla uh, classroom additions, the design and paperwork is complete. The projects are out the bid. We open the bids at the beginning of September and hope to award in September the contracts at the last September board meeting. And the same for the uh, central office. They'll be going out the bid and we hope to award that at the end of the September 28th board meeting. Okay. The good news on the Washington Avenue uh, playground front is the installation is scheduled for this <laughs> week. Good news, I was there today, it's all in boxes. <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, the maintenance department has to go back tomorrow to do some final uh, Grading because the site was inspected today, and we hope to have the installer there on. Don't they have to pour cement? They have to do a little more grading and loosen up the, uh, the compacted mulch and try to drag some of the mulch. Okay. So that's all I have on the construction. Um, going back to uh, SBS, um, you know, with the front door closed, uh, is the administration comfortable with the way the buses are going to be kind of taking up the park? Uh, during drop off and pickups, like just the overall flow of the traffic with the front door being closed now? Because I mean, that's that's where the buses were that's dropped. Where, that's where the buses were dropped and <coughs> picked up. So I just want to make sure that that's been, you know, they're ready for that for the first week. Of I, I don't, <clears throat> don't know the details of what they've done to, to account for the change, but I know okay. that they think it's an improvement over just about every, every operation of the school. Okay. Uh, and I know that they assembled all of the walkers, I guess, in the gym back there, or maybe not. They, they assemble students in the gym for drop -off, for uh, pickup and, and dismissal at the end of the day. So I don't know if that's helpful to them or not. Okay. But I know that they're very happy with the redesign. Yeah, no, I was just thinking that just the, the number of buses and then all the cars kind of backing up onto Southern Boulevard has always been problematic, mm. and now it's going to be with three or four buses taking up the yep. pickup lane. Just food for thought, I can, I'm sure yep, you, I'll talk to Rob. It. Can I ask, um, just as once the middle school, those classrooms are completed, can we possibly think about maybe having a board meeting at the middle school and have some time for the board to tour those classrooms for those of us who don't have kids at the middle school sure. to be able to see the progress and, and what's been put in place there until maybe later in the cycle? Count the windows. No, I, I want to see it. I, I feel like we've talked so much about it on paper. I've been there all, all summer at different I know. phases. I'm sorry. Well, you can sit that one out then. And I'm going to want to have the same thing at Washington Avenue for the playground. We'll go over and play. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of questions, if I may. Sure thing. Uh, Peter, with regard to the usage of the turf, when will the uh, fall sport teams be able to use the turf? We are targeting that the first football game, which is... Friday the 9th is still going to happen. So you won't update. be able they won't be able to use the turf until the 9th? Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. My question is when can they use Once the turf? Once the paving is done around the turf and up and around the bleachers, then the field will be open. Next and week, hopefully, right? Yeah. So that, my question is when to finish paving is I'm oh, sorry, Rich, I misinterpreted. <laughs> okay. I thought you asked so when they were going to play the right. first game. Okay. No, no. when is it? When it I think I said, when can the turf be used? So sometime next week? Once the paving is complete. And what about the track? When will that be able to be used? Once the paving, the Same trick is that, yeah, the way, the, the way that the That's former macadam has all been dug up, you can't access the yeah, turf I, I until just, it's paved. I just need the date. That's sometime next week. That's all I'm asking. Yes. And the uh, bleaches, when will that be fine, I'll finished? As soon as they, the bleachers are completed, they need to do the paving so that they can next access week. the bleachers. So, so that will be afterwards? And once the paving is done. Okay. And then you said something about the snack shack. Is that on a different schedule? Yes, because there was a... Uh, do tell that schedule. Uh, there was a minor hiccup where the, the snack shack was initially put in an incorrect place. So we had to, uh, there was a little hold up in getting it into the correct location. 
So that's why that's behind schedule. And that's why we're behind schedule. I just want to know what the schedule is. When it will it be should ready? Be, we are waiting Don't say next for week. the. Um, <laughs> not that. Right now, the anticipation is towards the end of September. So there will be the first couple of games without uh, the use of the full shack. Without popcorn. Okay, will the, any part of the shack be open for the beginning of the seasons for the fall no. sports? No. Okay. The, the booster yes, I met with uh, Tracy Ness and April Wingate this, this afternoon. Okay. I'm not walking into a windstorm when I go to the next booster meeting. Well, you still may be, but they're and informed. What are, the, uh, are there any plans that are going to be implemented for selling of beverages or using some sort of... Uh, I'm going to defer that one to Tracy and April because they seem to be able to think of, okay, for the first game, they can easily do tables. Um, they're not sure what items. They know they can sell cold beverages, not thinking that they need coffee and hot chocolate. And I'm not sure what food items they're going to do. When is over. Cougar Night this year? October. It's October like 11th, 12th, 13th. Like it starts so that Wednesday, will, Thursday, and goes so through that weekend. So will the Snack Shack be up and running by then? It should be. October. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Don't ask me. So we need to move it again. No. <laughs> um, wait, I, I just have a few questions. I'm sorry, Sal, were you? No. Nope. You did? Mike, did you have questions? No? Okay. Uh, Peter, on the Cougar Complex, you had mentioned, um, when you said paving, of course, I know you mean the top. We're not talking about the parking lot, but you didn't mention the parking lot update. <coughs> the As of last week, the bumpers or telephone poles were in place but needed to be adjusted. I was not down there today, so I don't know when the, I'll call them the poles, will be installed into the bumpers. But that should happen, I, I would think. Before Rich jumps in, I'm going to say, do you have a timeline on I do not. <laughs> I have to check that with the architect slash contractor. Okay. We just don't want, without the looping poles, to see we're going to be in the same boat where people are going to be hitting those. And you, did you double check on the width of that to make sure emergency vehicles can get through? I talked to the contract. I know we need 24, I think you said 24 feet. Okay. So the main entranceway is fine. He needed to alter the space. Uh, for example, if the vehicle had to make a turn to get into the field, like up the ramp. Yeah, no, I'm thinking emergency vehicle to get yeah, a Yeah, that a part speed. he needed to alter those poles. Right. I don't know if we just needed to move them or cut them. Okay. So Either way, they, they looked super good. narrow to me. I mean... I passed with uh, your nephew Grilly in a car, and we almost collided. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the width. Okay. Right, <laughs> nothing to do with the width. Um, uh, Keith, the contractor at the middle school, he's confident that other than the sinks in our room and that the, everything else will be student ready. Yes, there was a construction meeting today, and they discussed some items on the roof, which affect the turning on of the electric, which has all been rectified, and he's convinced the engineer. Uh, Everything should be ready. He has HVAC startup scheduled for Thursday. Okay. And then my final question is, um, uh, Scott, the guy at Cougar, had indicated that the press box came with a limited number of keys. Do you have possession of those? Or does he have possession of those? I do not know if Scott still has them or he transferred them to John. Okay. And we'll go to John Cataldo first to determine the... Um, have them and who gets them. Okay, just keep an eye because he had mentioned that there was a limited number. Um, but I'm sure the district, we can change the lock set so that would be district uh, district control. Uh, and on that note, I know that I've been contacted by Jim Lonergan regarding, I guess, PAL football and the borough as to what the plans for access are. Um, so that is a, still a work in progress. I haven't got that. That's a good segue to my comment. I want to make sure that there's a limited number of keys and that we know exactly mm -hmm. where the keys are at all times. Mm -hmm. And whoever's going to have that, mm -hmm. have a key, that the administration is aware of it so we don't run afoul. Uh, and plus, we're putting a ton of money yeah. into the system, and we want to have very limited and controlled access. Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, that works well because there's a limited number of keys. Well, even with a limited number of keys, I think we need to have a schedule and it be synced up. You know, if there are X amount of home games that are being, you know, whatever through eighth grade football and they're using it I think we need to know when those games are happening and not saying that we have to physically be there but we should know when they are and when when that snack shack is being used no I'm talking more of the, uh, and the, the and press the box and, and, and all of it I think the whole place I mean you know it's it's a community yep. property but I think because in years past there have been problems yeah 
And sorry, Peter, one last question, which um, John, or John was looking into uh, cameras for that facility. Or is that still in the works? I don't need a date. I just need that a That is in the works. works. With all the construction items, I haven't followed through with John, okay. but I can because I don't know if he needs the snack shack as an access point for wiring, but I'll follow Okay. Up. Just if you could just keep it on your radar. You know, if, if you're thinking of putting surveillance cameras down at Kugel, I'm presuming we're going to have the same thought process for uh, Haas. We have them at Haas okay. already. Good job. Step out of it. <laughs> Haas is easier because they it's have to connect to our networks. It's so close to the right. school. Cougar is, an, Cougar is a, like a separate island, so we need Just a different... Didn't want the girls to be left out. Now we've been watching them for years. Yeah. <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> All right, excellent. Um, Peter, any other <coughs> construction? No, that's, that's it. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have it? Mike, you're good? No. Sal? No, Peter's been thoroughly beaten up. <laughs> For now? Okay, excellent. Uh, then we are going to move on to committee reports. Uh, moving over to personnel. Uh, Ms. Ciccarelli is not available, but Lada, you are able to move personnel or report on it? Uh, personnel has not met since our last meeting. Good report. Yes, excellent. Happy to Very so oblige. <laughs> no wonder you volunteered for that. Uh, moving over to curriculum, Michelle. Um, curriculum has not met since our last meeting, and our next meeting is September 25th. Okay, okay. excellent. Uh, finance and facilities, we have not met, correct, Peter? Correct. Right. Okay. Next meeting, I believe, is 9 11. 9 11, okay, very good. And policy and planning, Mr. Connors? Yes, we met this evening before this meeting. We discussed a number of topics. Uh, the, there are three policies that are going to be on the addendum, not on your regular uh, agenda. Policy 8550, outstanding food services. Policy 5330, administration of medical medication. And regulation 5330.01, administration of medical marijuana. Uh, we also discussed a policy dealing with creating overriding concern with the uh, usage by our students of vaping. And it seems to be a spiking not only in the high school, but going down into the middle, middle school. Uh, and the vaping, from what little I know about it, seems to carry the same hazards, potential hazards, as the smoking of regular cigarettes. And there seems to be an increase uh, across the board. So the, the board, and at least the policy committee, is contemplating revising some current policies to include provisions with regard to the vaping as well as a growing concern that some students, not many, but some, are substituting uh, the vaping material for uh, certain uncontrolled, uh, uh, illegal controlled substances. I, I find it interesting, or if not strange, that it is, you can be 19 and buy this device, but you have to be 21 to use it. Doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense, but in any event, most of that age would, that age would serve as a cutoff for most of the students who are using this are under the age. So the, the board is giving serious consideration to implementing a policy to try to remedy and to hopefully deter the use and concerns of the abuse. We also discussed uh, parent code of conduct at interscholastic inter uh, schools, I'm sorry, athletic activities. Uh, we're trying to get a handle on that and be consistent and fair. We also discussed policies dealing with public attendance at school events, as well as an athletic code of conduct. Those uh, policies that I just mentioned are still going to be subject of uh, some debate. I hope to have that, uh, those policies better fine-tuned by the next board meeting, if not the board meeting after that. When's the next policy meeting? Hello? Our next meeting is September 11th, so maybe we can have something crafted by then. Even if you do it, September 20th. September 20th. And then what's the next meeting after the 20th, Mike? 28th. 28th? 25th. Well, perhaps we can maybe circle back. I, I think it would be important to have this, mm -hmm. at least some of these, addressed uh, of course, it's close as to soon school. as this, the start of school as possible. Yeah. So if I'm going to ask the fellow board members on the policy committee at the end of this, if we can cir circle back at some dates available mm -hmm. before September 11th, if we could, I'd appreciate that. Mm -hmm. so that's it. Thank you. A lot is the alternate, and I could act as a second alternate if you need bodies. So just let me know which. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Connors on any of the policies or some of the, the direction? Um, 
but I certainly agree with Rich that we should move as quickly as possible to have as much of that in place before we start school or certainly our first set of events. Thank you, Rich. Moving I'm sorry, the next policy is September 22nd, did you say? 20th. 20th. Thank you. Uh, liaison reports, uh, Mr. Connors? Uh, nothing to report on behalf of the borough. Can you send him a thank you note for paving through Sean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when I see Mr. Lonigan, I will express our gratitude. There might be one in Mr. Valenti's <coughs> sweater. Uh, Township, Ms. Clark? Um, the only thing to report is that on September 23rd is the Walk Out of Darkness walked for suicide prevention. It will be at Cougar Field. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, athletic boosters, Mr. Connors? Uh, they have not met since our last meeting. They are next scheduled to meet is September 12th. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to encourage all parents of freshmen as well as transfer students into the high school as well as all returning parents uh, to get engaged with regards to not only the Chatham Athletics but also the, the arts and the music and the theater, uh, the boosters. We could not operate the district we do without the help of those boosters. Um, and, but they need your help. They need your help in terms of participation. They also need your help in terms of money, uh, preferably both. Uh, but if you don't have both, then certainly do one or the other. They give back, so I would urge you please to give as much time as you possibly can. Uh, just so you know that the athletic boosters were the ones that were donated the money for the scoreboard. And they are also behind these operation uh, of the Snack Shack. They do a lot, and they also uh, s uh, provide stipulations to the coaching. Uh, again, we couldn't operate without them. We wouldn't be providing the things we have here. Uh, with and the athletic is not unique. It's all the other boosters as well. So please, please, give time or money. Do something. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Connors. Uh, moving over to the performing arts boosters, Mr. Arnock. Thank you, Jill. Uh, you know that it's that time of year because you start to hear the metronome in the afternoon in the back of the high school. And my dogs hear the metronome and then they hear the horns and then the dogs start barking like crazy and drive my, my neighbors crazy. So it's that time of year. The Chatham High School Marching Band is learning their 2017 show this week. Uh, it's called The Land of the Free. It's a very patriotic piece. <clears throat> They're going to debut the show at the September 9th football game and begin the competitive season on Saturday, September 16th. This is director Brian Conti's 26th year directing the band, and he's assisted by Tim Orton and Chatham High School graduates Dan Graziano and Tony Katsopoulos. And the guard is directed by Don Sobey and, uh, and author Mo Moy. My daughter's in the marching band. She loves it. So um, <laughs> I, I love talking about it. Anyway. Uh, Rich Connors inspires me frequently um, <laughs> with, with uh, the tremendous support um, and ad as an advocate for the athletic boosters. And hopefully, I'd like to be some fraction of that, at least, for the Chatham Performing Arts Boosters. Uh, they do a tremendous, tremendous job supporting the theater productions, supporting marching band, uh, supporting uh, not all types of arts in the school system. And, uh, they are having their first meeting on September 13th. I'd like to welcome everyone to come. They normally meet in, uh, in that room next to the band room. They're not going to be meeting there the 13th because of a scheduling conflict, so I'll have the correct, uh, the correct room assignment later on this week, and we'll put it up on the Performing Arts Boosters website. But please donate your time. Please donate money to the Performing Arts Boosters. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. I appreciate that. Looking forward to the, the plays and the marching band. Um, Chatham Education Foundation, Ms. Kenny. Um, I apologize, I do not have an update, but okay. I will echo Mr. Connors and uh, Mr. Arnock in terms of the work that the Education <laughs> Foundation does and would encourage um, anyone who's listening and here to, or here tonight to participate or to give to the organization. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Kenny. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Gilfillan is not here, and Ms. Cronin is also not here. Um, moving on, I would like to make a motion to move the public and private session minutes of July 24th. I have to abstain. Um, besides Michelle, Peter, who else is abstaining? Um, Second. Mr. Valenti. Okay, and Rich seconded my motion to pass the minutes. Could you like to pass it? What's that? Uh, um, uh, four. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. okay. 
Okay. So, so we're good? Do you need to do a roll call? or Probably. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstaining? Abstain. Done. Okay, very good. So we have our first opportunity for public commentary. Um, if you wouldn't mind, the microphone is on this side of the room. If you could just introduce yourself and um, sign in. Not necessarily in that order. Maybe you can sign in and then introduce yourself and uh, where you're from. Typically, Borough Township, if you want to give your address, that's fine as well. Sure. Good evening. Hi, that, everyone. So just that mic goes up. Okay. Think, otherwise, you're going to hurt your back. All right. Awesome. Well, anyway, welcome back. Thank you for all you do for the town and the schools. We, we never left that. really appreciate it. <laughs> we, have meetings, we have meetings throughout the summer, but okay. welcome back. Um, anyway, um, my name is Tom Furta. I live in Chatham Township. I have a son at the high school and also a son at the middle school. Um, my comment is with reference to the improvements at Cougar Field. Um, well, I think they're awesome. I, while we really want them to be in place, I just wish, um, and by, on behalf of parents, there's extra emphasis placed on safety and making sure that things are not rushed, especially with regards to installing the bleachers and hopefully, you know, season kicks off in grand fashion. Um, my son will also be on the marching band, so, um, you know, it's an exciting time to um, look forward to a new school, school season. So just wanted to say thank you and thank you, Tom. take care on Cougar Field. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind signing in. Tom's a great supporter of marching band, and we rub elbows at the different... Excellent. Uh -huh. Booster people. Secret Safety answer. always first, Tom, but thank you for the, <laughs> the <laughs> reminder. About it. Yeah. But the I think you, you know, you got a lot of Tom, tough questions. Tom, I'll only tell you that the, the, cl the crew that, insta that installed the bleachers is part of the, man the company that manufactures them. So the contractor buys a set of bleachers from... I believe the Southern Bleacher Company in Texas, Southern Bleacher Company sends a crew to install them. So it's not like, oh, here's a bunch of bleachers and, you know, a bunch of handymen go put them together. So they've been put together by the bleacher company and awesome. they get certified and everything else. All right. Good to hear. Ed Barmaki in Chatham Borough. Um, there's two conflicts uh, with the Chatham Borough Council with your Board of Ed meetings in September. Yes. September 11th and the 25th. Yep. I already complained to them about it. And did, and uh, did they move their meetings? Well, they, uh, the <laughs> borough, kind of our puts, busy season. they put their calendar out in January. And they, it's always the second Monday of the month. Second and fourth Monday of the month. And your calendar, I guess, came out in May. So you wouldn't already know when you made your schedule that there was a conflict. So I'm asking you respectfully, to keep that in mind, of course, the last time I asked that, you guys didn't, you kind of ignored it, I guess. But no, no, uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. How many times did you go back and forth with Dr. Lasusa? You're saying we ignored it, but well, I mean, I didn't really get ignored it. Ignored is a tough word. How many okay, times? you didn't ignore it. Thank you. I got a, what I thought was an unsatisfactory answer because that's different. Okay. <laughs> doesn't seem there was like an effort to even try to change it. You know, I appreciate and the conflicts. I mean, so we, Ed, we really do try. Unfortunately, September is really our busy season. It's the beginning of the school year. We have, you know, personnel items to move, budget items to move. Um, Labor Day, if you can move Labor Day, that would be helpful. But because Labor Day is on a Monday, we kind of have to get two more meetings in. And then October, of course, we have other budgetary items. So I totally like appreciate it. five days in a week, the, the week work week. So I don't know. Yeah, well, if that's possible there's to change any of that. that we're trying to jimmy our schedules as well. I know, I understand you know, that. Five I'm, just, I'm just wondering if you guys tried or we not. We do try. It's just, because not, it's just not as simple as that. But, and we I, understand I don't think that it was simple at all. I just think that you, you, know, you know ahead of time, and you should be able to plan around it, just like you plan around anything else. All right, well, thank you. And hopefully maybe the borough can shift their meeting. Then. <laughs> They're not. They said they won't. They will they, not because they said it in January, and they have, you know, well, you guys have other meetings. They have other meetings too. So right. So you thing. know, we do do our best. Like you know, planning the board. September's a tough. Like September's a tough month because of the, the beginning of the school year and Labor Day. Okay. So thank you. Um, we still have an opportunity for public commentary. There's still a few of you left in the audience that haven't spoken. No, good to go. Okay. Well, there's another opportunity if something strikes your fancy throughout the meeting. So we're going to move on to our regular agenda, moving along with personnel. Ms. Kenny, are you still okay? Yes. Moving personnel for me? 
Yes, I'd like to move um, action items 1 to 22 on the main agenda with um, uh, action items uh, 23 on an addendum. And then there's also an amended number 14 on an addendum. Thank you. Second. Since Ms. Grant is shy, I'll note that in the board packet and in the um, items for the uh, public view, a attachment A17, A17 has been revised. A14. No, A17, the attachment has been revised. And on A14, the um, all of the staff members on the original agenda on the original agenda will be. There will be a note added as to the maximum number of hours that each power professional will work. Okay. Okay. Got it. For the attachment 17. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Sorry, that's which, what number are you Which on? one? 20. 20. Just that one item, the last box, goes from 12 to 6. Right, the last two individuals. Oh, the last two. Oh, the last two? Yeah. Okay. But still the full year, the date doesn't change? It goes out till June? Yeah. Okay. $12,000 savings right there. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Grant or Dr. Sousa on any of the personnel items? No? Good. Peter? Uh, agenda items A1 through H22 with A14 having addendum adjustment items and A20 having adjustment items. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Ms. Clark? Yes. Mr. Connors? Yes. Ms. Kenny? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Agenda items passed 6 0. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, finance and facilities. Mr. Gilfillan is not here. Uh, Mr. Arnoff, are you on finance? Yes. Would you mind moving um, items B1 through B23? No, I would not mind. You know, one step. Sure thing. Moving items B1 through 23, and there are no amendments. Correct. Um, anybody able to second that? Second. Second. Thank you. Peter, there are no donations to note? No, this is, I just commented that Dr. Lasus is the first meeting yeah. I, I think in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's just trying to do a quick read. Everybody's, everybody's resting over the summer. Yeah, Ho well, hopefully they've had they've been shaking a, the can Excellent. like the firemen do yep. on depending what road, uh, small highway you take, and everybody the office back. will open in September. Very good, thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions for uh, Peter or yeah. Dr. Masseuse on any of the budget items? Um, I just had a question on uh, number 14 in terms of the bus routes. Were we able to increase any of them in terms of... Uh, Unfortunately, you know? no. We are status quo with last year. Um, met with the bus company twice over the, or at the end of the school year and over the summer. Um, they still are being negatively impacted by shortage of drivers. However, they do have enough drivers to man the routes that we have, but did not have enough drivers to, add, to increase because we were hoping to increase one at the high school to, um, or increase the high school so that we would be able to loosen the time restriction of when the high school is get picked up, but we have not been able to do that. Okay. But we're still able to accommodate every student. Yes, we're still able to accommodate everybody. Okay. Every student that needs to be accommodated. Um, okay, any additional questions for Peter on any of the finance or facility items? 
No, all good. Peter, would you mind? Your agenda item is B1 through B23. Mr. Arnett. Yes. Ms. Clark? Yes. Ms. Connors? Yes. Ms. Kenny? Yes. Mr. Valenti? Yes. Ms. Weber? Yes. Agenda item is passed 6 0. Excellent. Thank you. Moving on to curriculum, Ms. Clark? Um, I move item C1 through 4. Second. Okay. There's no report, right? There's no HIP report? There is one. No, actually, no, mine must be one. Right. No, there isn't. Mine, no. I okay. have so much stuff in here. From the so do we need to have C1 or no? Since we're not accepting any? It used to be worded differently, but... It does say nothing to report. Okay. We don't need to, okay. don't need to have it. To We've been keeping it there so that we Oh, oh the little parentheses, so. nothing to report in the seven fonts. Got it. Got it, got it. Okay, thank you. The first word is acceptance of. Yeah. So way buried at the bottom of the fine print, it says nothing to report. Okay, very good. Place in bold. Ah, and in parentheses. Excellent. Any questions on curriculum? Ms. Chase loves questions. No? Rich, you got a question no. for Ms. Chase? No, I'm just trying to come up with one. All right, darn. Yeah, uh, Peter, would you mind? Sure. Agenda item C1 through C4. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Ms. Clark? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Kenny? Yes. Mr. Valenti? Yes. And Ms. Weber? Yes. Agenda item C4. Great. Thank you very much. Um, policy? Oh, an addendum. Oh, thank you. Mr. Connors, would you move? Yes, I'd like to move uh, policy D1, which includes the three policies that I mentioned, uh, the two policies and the one regulation that I mentioned earlier. Uh, thank you. Does anybody have any additional questions uh, for Mr. Connors on those policies? No? Peter, would you mind again? Your agenda item uh, B1. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Ms. Clark? Yes. Mr. Connors? Yes. Ms. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Valenti? Yes. And Ms. Weber? Yes. Agenda item is passed. Excellent. Uh, before we go into our second opportunity for public commentary, I just want to remind the board um, we have an executive session after. No action will be taken. <coughs> um, we're covering both a legal matter and a personnel matter. One, one action, there will be action taken about the personnel matter. Oh, about matter. the personnel matter. Action will be taken. Sorry. Um, I don't anticipate us being there more than an hour. Definitely not more than an hour. Okay. I was just trying to time box it if anybody wanted yep. to stick around. Um, so just as a reminder, and there may be enough of us that we can each get a seat this time. We don't have to run in there. So we now have our opportunity for, public, second opportunity for public commentary. If something has... Speak, spark your interest, or if you want to circle back to something. No? Seeing none? No? Sure. Going once? No? Gentleman from Madison, nothing? You are loyal, man. i got to give you that. Well, thank you for coming again, everybody. Enjoy. I hope the, uh, the rest of the summer goes well, and we'll see you back here in a couple weeks. Thanks so much. I make a motion to adjourn the public meeting. Second. Second.